Welcome to the Wood Turning Workshop. Today's project is something you'll be able to use during the holidays or display at your house all year round, a birdhouse ornament. Stay tuned. Today is going to be a great show because making a birdhouse ornament is one of my favorite things to do. And it's because of all the special little touches and design work that makes each one of these unique. Let's take a close look at this birdhouse ornament and see what it takes to make one. We're going to have to hollow out a ball, and in that we'll have a hole drilled for the tiny bird. It's up to you to supply one. We're going to drill a littler hole that will hold the perch for the bird. We'll have an end cap down here which is going to cover a hole in the bottom, and we have a large cap up here which is the top or the roof of the birdhouse. And in that will be a tiny hole drilled there, and we'll have a little eyelet hook in there that we can hang the ornament from. So let's get started. The wood we'll be using today, maple for the body of the birdhouse, paduk for the top and the bottom, and magasser ebony for the perch. We're going to start with the maple. We're going to mount this in the chuck as a square. It'll hold it very nicely. Tighten that up. Get my eye protection on right now. We're going to bring the tool rest up. I've got it set right at center. I'm going to spin this, nothing's hitting. Lock it down. Grab your roughing gouge. Make sure that your lathe is at a slow speed. Turn it on and bring the speed up. Now even though this is a small piece, spread your feet, get your balance because you're going to want to lean your body across while you rough this out. Bring it in, rub the bevel, raise the handle, starts to cut, bring your body across back, bevel up, bring the handle up, cut, bring your body across. You can even take smaller cuts if you want and just repeat the movement so you round out the cylinder. Let's see how we're doing. Good, we're rounded out nicely. Now, before we go any further, we're going to have to drill the holes for the bird and the perch. And I want to orient the grain. See this wide band right here? That's where I want to drill the holes. Because if you look, then the rings of the wood grain surround the hole. It's a nice little design doing it that way. So I'm going to put this up here and probably I want the hole for the bird to go right there. So we'll drill that hole first and then figure out where we're going to orient the perch. Now I'm using a punch because this is a rounded surface and I don't want the bit to wander as I'm drilling the hole. Next step, lock in the spindle so this won't turn while you're doing the drilling. And bring your tool rest back out of the way. You can use it as a rest to kind of guide your hand and steady you up. I've got a 3 8 inch drill bit in here. I want to make sure I'm going in straight for the angle I need it, and I'm going to drill to the center of the blank. That's good. Now, we're going to go ahead and mark where we want the perch to be, which is probably going to be about a quarter of an inch lower, and just center it up on there. And we're going to make that hole with a 1 8 inch drill bit. And this is very critical. Make sure you're lined up very straight on this because the perch will always show if you had a crooked hole. That's good. Now look, we have a lot of torn grain here. That's why we haven't shaped this yet because we can turn all of that away now. While we're drilling, we might as well go ahead and drill the hole in the center of the blank. That will help us hollow things out in a minute. So we're going to start with our skew chisel, bring our tool rest up, Got to make sure that we unlock the spindle so it'll run freely. And we're going to make a dimple right here. 
and that will help the drill bit go in straighter and make a nice cut. We'll start the lathe up, get our speed set right, bring the skew chisel in flat, and just make the dimple by pushing in. Reduce the speed of the lathe a little bit. We don't want to burn the wood. Lock the tailstock in and slowly advance the drill bit. Then bring it back out so we can clear the chips out. <laughs> then take it back in again. And then we're going to continue this until we drill all the way through the blank. We want a hole in the top and the bottom of the ornament. Now's the time that you can let your imagination run wild because we're going to shape the birdhouse. Do any design you want, just keep in mind a couple of things. One, you're going to have to hollow it because you have to lighten up the ornament enough so you can hang it. The other thing is, is that whatever design or shape you make the body of the birdhouse will affect the top and the bottom that you create also. And as we're turning wood away, we want to turn away enough to get rid of the torn grain from the drilling. So we're going to start with our spindle gouge. We're going to start by making a gentle bead shape. Make sure that you keep the bevel in contact with the wood throughout the entire cut. And as I always say, you sneak up on a bead, so take light cuts. Don't try to remove all the wood in one shot. And roll the tool as you reach the end of the work. And since this is spindle work, you have to start at the high point of the wood and work your way in towards the center. Never come back the other way, you'll tear the grain out. Cool, I've got the bottom shaped, and I like the look of it. So what that tells me now is I'm probably gonna make this the shape of an egg. That'll look pretty nice. Eggs, birds, it goes together. So we're gonna start working on the top now. We're gonna start by making a couple of cuts going towards the headstock. Now we need to remove the wood from the left side to allow us to keep cutting on the right side. Shift back to the right, keep shaping. Now we don't want to take this all the way down to where we're going to part it off. We need to leave enough wood there to give us strength and stability while we're hollowing. Now before we hollow this out, we need to sand. Because once it's hollowed out, we could build up too much heat and crack the wood. And now's the time you can actually refine your shape. If you have any tool marks, or if you don't like a curve, use this 150 grit and you can reshape the surface a little bit. I went ahead and sanded all the way up to 600 grit because I decided I want my ornament to have a shiny surface. And we're going to do that by using a friction polish. Now normally when you're turning, like I said earlier, heat is your enemy. But this time it's your friend. Because with friction polish, you have to build up enough heat to get the finish to melt in. I'll show you. You start your lathe and bring the speed up really fast, about 2,000 RPM. And now we're going to touch the polish to the wood and it'll melt in and give us a high gloss finish. Press into the wood and you'll feel the heat build up and move the towel quickly to avoid any buildup of the finish. Then switch the paper towel around to a clean side and buff the finish to a high shine. Now it's time to hollow out the inside of the birdhouse with our curved scraper but you can't see inside. On our Baby Rattle episode, we made this jig so you could look inside and see the technique. Let's take a look at that clip. We've made a blank with a window. So now you can actually see inside. You can see the hole we drilled. And once it starts spinning, you're going to be able to see the tool movement as we're cutting. And the tool we're going to be using is a small curved scraper. When you use this tool, make sure that you rest the straight part of the shaft on the tool rest, not the curved part. If you rest the curved part, it's going to want to turn on you. If it's on the straight part, you'll have good balance and good support. 
The other thing is make sure that the tool rest is up a little bit to where the tip is just slightly above center because when you raise this tip up is when the cutting starts. Let's see how this works. The first cut I make establishes the thickness of the wall of the ball. I make a plunge cut. Then I can bring the tool back out, feel for that shelf, and make another cut. I work my way down in steps. I'm not hollowing the ball to finish thickness right off the bat. If the tool stops cutting, just slightly rotate the tip up, and that's when it will engage. So to be safe, rotate the tip down, it won't cut, rotate the tip up, and it does cut. If this was a normal ball, you'd have to stop occasionally and use compressed air to clear out the chips. Now you might notice the tool's not cutting very well. Well, that's because it's a scraper. Their edges don't last very long. But this tool is special. Rather than take it to the grinder to get a new edge on it, we have to do something different. If you look at this scraper, it has a very specific design behind it. It's a round piece of steel that curves, and then this is flattened off, and that's the cutting edge. It's one piece. If you notice, this shaft is perfectly in line with the tip. If I was to take this to the grinder like I normally do, and start grinding away at the tip, I would shorten the tip. That would be bad because I'd run out of cutting steel to begin with. But the other thing is, I'd be moving the tip further and further back. It would not be in line with the shaft anymore, which would cause instability when I started turning. It'd be very hard to hold this steady. What I have to do is take a diamond file and with that diamond file I lay it flat on the blade and go across. I have to make very sure that I'm doing a very very flat movement here because I don't want to round off the edges. Now that won't leave a burr. If you do want one take your file and lightly dress the sides by pushing and stroking upwards. That will raise a burr. It won't last very long, but it will make a very nice clean cut. But you can still cut with just the sharp edge. There, that's cutting much better. I'll just take light cuts to finish up the bottom, then go back up to the top. Again, it's like a plunge cut. We make a shelf, and that shelf helps us find the next cut, and then that shell helps us find the next cut. And we just work our way all the way down to the bottom, nibbling a little bit at a time. Now when you think you have the wall about the way you want it, you can pull the tool back and forth and clean up the inside of the ball. Now leave a nice smooth finish. When you're hollowing something like this, it's always safer to stop the lathe before you remove the tool. It'll prevent a catch. Now this looks a little bit messy, and that's because I only had half the ball there, so some of the wood tore out. Now you have an idea on how to do the hollowing, and the only difference between that example and our project is this is an elongated shape rather than a circle, and that's not a big deal. The other thing, though, is we have holes drilled in this, so you can't be as aggressive taking the wood out or you'll start to chip it. And remember, Everybody will be able to look through this hole and see the quality of work you've done. So make sure your wall thickness is very uniform. So let's get started. Stop the lathe, 
And when you're hollowing with a hook tool in a small area like this, leave the tool in while you stop the machine. It's a little bit safer. Now I'm looking through the hole. I have a little more wood to take out right here. I can see it's a little bit thick. Other thing I want to do, take the tool in, find out how deep I am, and measure. Look over here. I've got about an eighth of an inch more to take off. I'm going to put the tool back in, rotate the piece so it's not touching, and turn the lathe back on and continue cutting. Now with my spindle gouge, I'm removing some of this excess wood so I can get ready to part this off. Now I could go ahead and part this all the way off with my spindle gouge, but there's a chance I could jam the tool into my hand while I'm catching the birdhouse. So a parting tool is a much safer way of doing this. I'm not worried about having a perfect surface on the top of the birdhouse because the roof is going to cover it. Now it's time to turn the perch for the birdhouse. I've got a scrap piece of my gas or ebony, and I can put it on the inside part of my jaws and grab it firmly, like so. We'll bring the tool rest up. Get it really close when you're doing small spindle work. Rotates, it's not hitting it. And we're going to grab a small spindle gouge and start making the perch. All we're going to do is start making a straight cylinder. We're going to taper the end and see if it fits the hole we drilled in the birdhouse. Once it fits, then we can go ahead and turn the perch to any shape we want. Oh, nailed it. Perfect. We're going to make a bead on the end and you really have to sneak up carefully on something this small. Just take little bits of wood off. Now we're going to go ahead and sand the perch and leave the speed high because the diameter is so small there's not much chance of burning the wood. Now apply the friction polish, work it in good, get a nice shiny finish. Now before we part this off, we're going to take a piece of sandpaper and take the finish off of the part that we're going to glue into the birdhouse. That way we're assured of a good bond. This piece is so small, I can use my spindle gouge safely to part it off. Just don't drop it. You'll lose it the second it hits the floor. Now it's time to turn the top and the bottom of the birdhouse. We're going to make them out of the same piece of wood and we're using paduk. I went ahead and roughed this out and we're going to start with the bottom piece of the birdhouse. We're going to use our spindle gouge. Again, use your imagination. Make any shape you want. Just keep in mind this should complement the shape of your birdhouse.
Once you have the bottom done, start working on the bead for the lip. There. Now the next thing we want to do, grab our calipers, get the inside diameter of the hole we drilled through the bottom. We're going to take that and using our parting tool, we're going to transfer that diameter down there and make a tenon that will go in the hole. Now, we're going to use our skew chisel on its side as a negative rake scraper, and we're going to bevel in the underside of this cap. That way, it will follow the contour of the birdhouse. Now we're going to sand and work our way all the way through 600 grit. Now that we have a smooth surface, with your skew chisel back on its side again, we're going to make a couple of decorative grooves. Now lightly touch up the surface again with a piece of sandpaper. and apply the friction polish. Now it's time to part this off with our parting tool. Now it's time to turn the top, and it's the exact same procedure as the bottom. The only difference is, it's a little bit larger. And one thing we do have to make sure of, is that the tip on the top of the roof is thicker than what we did on the bottom. And I'll show you why in a minute. With your skew chisel on its side, make a dimple in the tip of the roof. Now the reason I left the tip thicker and put a dimple in there is because we're going to drill a small hole that will hold the eye hook that we're going to hang the ornament from. Start the lathe up, you're going to center the bit up on the hole and just press in.
I've dry fitted everything to make sure all the pieces fit nicely. Now I'm going to grab some super glue to put it together. Oh there, now we have an ornament we can use year round or at Christmas time. Good luck finding the bird to fit it though. Well until the next time on the Wood Turning Workshop, keep turning.